Newton's second law of motion is a, the one that allows us to do some real calculations. It reads that the applied force, the, the force we apply to an object, is going to equal the, the object's mass times the acceleration that we create in the object. Now here we say net force, because if there are multiple forces acting on an object, Newton's second law says it's the total, the vector sum of all those forces that are acting on the object that matters. Newton's second law allows us to predict the outcome of a force, because we're familiar with what to do uh, when we want to predict the, the motion of an object once we know its acceleration. And if we knew the forces present, we would now be able to predict all the subsequent motion on an object. This con concept of mass here in Newton's second law is a constant of proportionality. It's an inherent property of any object, but it's the thing that relates the acceleration that's, that results from the force that's applied. It's a little bit of an unfamiliar topic to talk about uh, to some of us to talk about ma the mass of an object, but if we think about uh, conceptually, it's approximately how much of matter there is in something. The idea that the f the force we apply is proportional to acceleration with this constant proportional high mass would explain why, for example, if we hit a golf ball with a certain force from a golf club. F equals ma, when m is very small, a would be very large. On the other hand, if we had a truck with the same golf club, with the same swing, then although uh, it's the same force over here on the left side of this expression, when m gets to be very big, then a will be very, very small. So we can hit either the golf ball or the truck with the same force and come up with a very different acceleration and all we're really changing is the mass of the thing we're trying to hit. Force is measured uh, in a particularly funny unit in the SI system. It's a derived unit. Remember the base units in the SI system are the kilogram, the meter, and the second for mass, length, and time. In the SI system, the, the unit of force is called the Newton. One Newton is equal to one kilogram times one meter per second squared. So we'll have to remember this new unit, this derived unit called a Newton. In the British system, the unit of force is called the pound, as in how many pounds do you weigh? Many of us think of uh, the unit of pound as uh, mass, but actually it's a unit of force. How much pull do we have from gravity? To convert these units, we should know that one pound is equal to 4.45 newtons. I have to confess, I didn't remember that number, uh, but I recall the conversion that we learned in grade school that one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. That's actually a dangerous conversion because one kilogram, that's a unit of mass, 2.2 pounds, well that's, uh, that's a quantity of force. But the way I remember this conversion of one pound is 4.45 newtons, it comes from the idea of converting one kilogram times of uh, acceleration, the acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared, which gives me 9.8 newtons equals 2.2 pounds. If I divide then uh, uh, both sides by 2.2, I have one pound is 4.45 newtons. So this is the conversion you'll want to remember. Now mass is not the same thing as weight. Weight is the force of gravity uh, acting on an object. So if we have planet Earth here and here's a little object, weight is the amount of force that the object is being pulled down by, by gravity. Mass is how much material is in the object. It's a matter. It's how much matter or how many atoms are. Uh, we'll have to complete that a little bit uh, into the future to explain it in a little bit greater detail. But it's not the same thing as weight. Now it's true that the greater the mass of an object, the greater the gravitational pull on it. 
and near the Earth, there's an approximate expression, which is quite, uh, quite useful, which is that the weight which is near, merely the force of gravity created by the Earth, is equal to the mass of the object that's being pulled on by Earth times this constant little g. And we've seen this constant little g before. That's that familiar 9.8 meters per second squared. Now we use weight and mass so interchangeably in our everyday speech. That's because we often use the concept of weight or the force created by gravity on an object to actually measure its mass. Often what we do is we put two masses on a balance scale and we measure the, the weight of one relative to the weight of another. In other words, we're looking at the gravitational force on mass number two as compared to the gravitational force of the Earth on mass number one. And if we find that mass number one has a greater weight, in other words, it's being pulled down to Earth, toward Earth more strongly than mass number two, then by dividing both sides by this constant little g, which is the same for all objects in the gravitational pull of Earth, we find out that mass number one is greater than mass number two. So this gives us a way of comparing masses if, as long as we develop a standard for the mass. But this is a measure that's only valid near the surface of the Earth. How, how, do we make the, how do we see the distinction between mass and weight when we're in lower gravity? Well, in lower gravity, you may have seen pictures of astronauts in outer space where they're managing to pick up a huge mass Here's a big piece of cargo being held at arm's length by one of the space shuttle astronauts who's suspended on, on, at the end of this long arm. This thing probably weighs many pounds and probably would be insurmountably heavy to, to pull around if we were here on the surface of the Earth. But because the, the force of gravity on this thing is much weaker out in outer space because g is going to be smaller in outer space than the tug that we have to give to pull it in a different direction is considerably smaller. At the same time, however, if one was to try to kick such a big heavy object and try to give it a big acceleration, it's still true that the force we would apply would equal F times F equals MA, and this is the mass of that heavy thing. If I wanted A to be very big, then that means that this force F would have to be very big, and consequently I would probably stub my toe. It would hurt a lot to try to create that much force on that object. 